take a look at these images here. They are all made from a brand new image generator that I've come across of called Focus or Focus. There's like three O's in it. Basically, it's a, another way you can generate images with AI that I'm going to show you in this video. It's very similar to tools like Automatic 1111 and Comfy UI, but in my opinion, it's a heck of a lot simpler and a lot more fun to generate images. I'll be honest, from my own personal experience, I think Automatic 1111 is great, but there is a lot of buttons and it kind of feels like you're trying to fly a plane. And now we have Focus, and I've been having a blast with this one. So let's just hop right into it. But first, let me show you how you can install Focus on your local machine. So what you're gonna wanna do is head on over to this GitHub page. I'll have a link down in the description below. And this is the main Focus GitHub repository by Ili Yesvil. You can read through the GitHub if you'd like, but what you're gonna wanna do is come down here to the download section once you're on the GitHub page and just click on the download button. Now I do wanna have a quick disclaimer. This is for Windows machines only and preferably with an Nvidia graphics card. I'm not too sure if it's been tested with AMD graphics cards. So I just wanna put that out there. Also, I am using a 3080 for my graphics card. I'm sure lower tier cards will also work, but just keep in mind, depending on how good your card is, will also determine how fast your images generate. That's just something to keep in mind when you're trying to generate images locally on your machine. But if you're on Windows and you have an Nvidia graphics card, you can just click on this download button here and it will download a like 1.5 gigabyte file to your downloads folder. And then once you have the file on your computer, you're just gonna wanna right click and extract it until you get a 5.6 gigabyte folder. They really packed a lot of stuff into this folder. Then once you have it extracted, it should take about five to 10 minutes. You can double click and open it and you'll have three different bat files here, which you can run. And these are all different versions of Focus. And what we're going to be using is the run underscore realistic file, but you can also use the run underscore anime or the run file, but we'll just double click on the run realistic and click run. And I've already have it set up, so it should open pretty quickly here. But on your first time installing it, it will take about 20 to 30 minutes for Focus to install all of the pre-made models and pre-made assets that you need in order to run on this image generator on your machine. But once you wait and you see this screen, you've made it. And now you can start using Focus or Focus, Focus, who knows? The UI is extremely simple. We literally just have our generation box here. And then we can type in our prompt here and click on generate. We'll say a humanoid robot playing basketball at a local gym and see what it gives us. And just looking at these first initial two right here, I'm already loving the quality of Focus or Focus or whatever it's called. This is what we got here for our first one. You can see that the image generation here is super clean, super crisp. Same with this one. It, it literally looks like a humanoid robot playing basketball at a local gym. It, it nailed it. It's, it's funny whenever I talk about this stuff because it's literally exactly what it is in the picture. But I think the image generation is just so much better compared to things like Stable Diffusion. At least when it comes to just out of the box, raw performance, just one time setup, type in, type in what you want and then you get images. But let's keep playing around with it. So if you've noticed, you can generate images like this if you want. You can save them and click on them, all the regular things you could do in an image generator. But then they also have these two buttons down here. One to input an image and then an advanced tab. And we'll go through these one by one. So in the input image tab, what you can actually do is input a image prompt here for our image generation. This can be anything from stylistic elements or just even elements in the picture, which is crazy. And I'll demonstrate this in a second. Um, they also have upscaling or variation here, which is just like a regular image upscaler. And then they also have in painting or out painting, which we'll try to go over later. Let's test out the image prompt here. What I like to do, and I've been trying this a little bit, is actually using a prompt of myself. As an example, I have this image here of myself from one of the thumbnails I took a couple days ago. It looks super weird and super cringy, but whatever, we'll go with it. And then I'll type in a new prompt. We'll say a guy on a boat, wide angles, sunny day, wearing glasses, photo realistic, photo real cinematic 4K wide angle. And we'll see what we get here. And that, and literally this was just by inputting in one picture. So with a little bit more fine tuning, we can definitely get them looking a lot nicer. A couple seconds later, we have our pictures and man, these are something. This first one here is really scary. It like vaguely looks like me, even with like the shirt on a boat. I, I don't like how up close it is, but I guess that's just part of the shot. I might have to get a different picture where I'm like a little bit farther back. Same thing with this one. It, it gives me a backpack and some glasses. I really like this one. 
one. I think I think this is great. Kind of vaguely do look like myself, which is which is really spooky. All right, let's keep going here. Let's try something else. Let's say for instance you want to make pictures of your dog, and this is a picture of your dog right here. I just pulled this right off Google. We'll say my dog on a roller coaster, fisheye camera, animated, realistic, 4K, ultra high res photograph, and we'll see what we get here. This will be interesting. Okay, the first one wasn't that great, but it is still a really good image, I have to say. Okay, so the images of the dogs actually look really good. These look really realistic. A dog on a roller coaster, pretty much. This one is really cute. I really like this one, but it didn't really follow the prompt all that correctly. So if we come down to our image prompt section, we click on the image. We actually have some options here to play with the image prompt, um, weights and when to stop at. So let's actually turn the weight of this up to like one something and then generate this again and see what we get. I think my favorite thing with Fuka so far, it just generates images out of the box that are so much better compared to things like Stable Diffusion, even rivaling things like Mid Journey and Dolly. And here we go. You can see by turning up the weight, it follows the image a lot more. It's not exactly quite like the dog, but it is just, this is just great. I love this a lot. Let's try turning it down a little bit to something like 0.7 and see if we can get something a little bit more of what we're looking for. All right, so this is interesting. This one kind of gave like a fish eye like filter on the corners here, which is pretty interesting. This one is really nice, but it's kind of on top of the roller coaster, not like in a roller coaster. I guess he's on a roller coaster technically, but didn't really follow the dog all too well, but it's still kind of close. Would like it to get a little bit closer. So you can see on the right side here, you can pick what kind of aspect ratio you want for your images. Keep in mind though, that the higher aspect ratio you choose, the longer it'll take to generate your photo. I know sometimes if I generate the super big sizes, it ends up taking a while and sometimes even crashes. So just keep that in mind. You can always pick a smaller size and then upscale it later if you like the photo. Also, there's a performance tab if you want speed, quality, or extreme speed. I found kind of negligible difference in between the couple, but I usually just keep it on quality as well as the image number this just changes the amount of images you can make and then a negative prompt here i don't really like to touch as honestly i've been getting great results just leaving it as it is now but next to the settings we have a style tab and this is where you're going to spend a lot of time tweaking to get some really fun stuff and you can pick from all the kinds of styles in here so let's try a new prompt with a different style and see if we can come up with something fun we'll say an astronaut in a pizza shop eating a slice of pizza cinematic fun photorealistic dramatic 4k let's add the sai photo photographic one, dynamic illustration, MRE manga, MRE anime, and art style abstract and generate. And let's see what we get with this one. Here's our images here of an astronaut eating pizza at a pizza shop. These aren't half bad. I think I especially like this one a lot more than the other one. I, this one's good, but I think it's just the angle is a little weird on this, but this one's not half bad. I will say that the slice of pizza isn't great and the text isn't that good, but I mean, Hey, it kind of followed the, the, anime abstract art style pretty well. Let's try it with a different one. Let's just go with the um, focus enhance masterpiece sharp and the cinematic effects here. And let's try this one more time and see what we get. All right, I like these ones a lot. You can really tell a difference in the cinematic enhanced masterpiece one here. This looks great. It looks like a photo out of like an like a advert or something, clearly eating pizza. There's the pizza, there's the astronaut. I think it's funny how there's even like the American flag patch on the astronaut suit here. Also the hands, the hands in this model look really good. There's only, if I count, four fingers look kind of positioned all right, same thing with these ones. I think one, two, three, four, five. So it, it looks really good. Same thing with this one. I think this one's really good. Although he's kind of grabbing the pizza in a really weird way. And I think there was supposed to be maybe like a slice here, but it, it doesn't really add up. So you can definitely tell it's AI generated. The astronaut suit is really nice. I love the way this came together up here. We'll say a man in a hazmat suit trying to suck in ghosts into his vacuum, photorealistic. And we'll just keep it on that. I think what really makes this image generator special compared to some of the other ones is just how simple it is. This is a real photorealistic picture of a guy in a hazmat suit. Looks very serious in this one. And I love the details in the hazmat suit. Like you can even see some imperfections in like the cloth and the material on the suit as well as like in the face. There's a, you can see all the different wrinkles and the, the face shape there. As for the other one, this one looks pretty all right. Although there's no ghosts in this picture, but I don't think the AI image model has any 
ghost material to be trained on. The face right here doesn't look that good. Some of the background doesn't look that great, although it, it does look realistic and a lot more believable than some of the other image generators that I've been looking at. Just poking around before we play with this some more, there's also a model tab up here, which you can play with the different models that you have. It comes with the realistic stock photo model as its base model, but you can also add in different ones you find on Hugging Face, which if you guys want to make a video on that, leave a comment down below. And then you can also pick from the different kind of weights you want for your models. To be honest, just keep this the standard how it is. Also the advanced tab, I haven't really mess around with these either if you want to go for something that's either a little bit more cleaner vivid artistic what it says here or that have more texture and are sharper then this is where you can do it although i really wouldn't mess around with this as sometimes they can get a little bit buggy and then also let's take a look at the upscaler over here so if i were to maybe save this picture for instance and then i'll bring it into here and then I'll delete the prompt, but then I'll say upscale two times fast and generate. Let's see what we get here. Okay, yeah, so it literally just upscales the image that we just made two times. That's really nice. So it's pretty handy. If you do like an image you see in here, you can just throw it into the upscaler and then you can pick what kind of upscaling method you want. And then you can have a new version right here. Also another great thing that I kind of forgot to mention, but you can also use these different modes here for the way your image prompts affects the image here. And that's either pirate Canny, CPDS, or Face Swab. I'll be honest, I haven't really messed around with them enough to get a full understanding of how they work, but but what's great is that you don't have to download any of these models themselves. If you want to use them, you just click on it and use it, and then it would install it inside of your window here. And then there's also the in painting or out painting tab here. We'll try to use this picture of a dog here, and then let's just see what we can do. So if we person, maybe we can add like a person behind there. Okay, yeah, so I haven't used the out painter in paint stuff yet so you can see it's automatically downloading the model for us which is amazing i hate when you have to download stuff and figure out what folder to put it in what i really love about focus 2 is there's always really good documentation at the bottom of each of the sections here and it looks like you can even do detailed fixing of faces here for it with the in painting and out painting which is really nice i'm definitely going to play around with this some more okay in all honesty this one sucked let's try a different one i have this picture of a cat here okay so i've gone through and i've scrolled rubbed out most of the cat. If I were to say in paint and then I put dog and I clicked on generate, let's see what we get here. If it puts a dog in this picture, I'm going crazy. It's going to be, it's going to be insane. No way. That is so cool. This is the original photo and this is the dog photo instead. Didn't get the paper down here right, which kind of blows, but it got the chair kind of right. Not really. And then this picture here, this one's I think is a lot better for just a dog. It got the chair in the background. The papers look a little bit better. They're still kind of washed out. So yeah, that's basically how the in-painting works. Um, if you wanted to expand this image, for instance, like let's say we had like, we'll say a beautiful waterfall on a planet, Mars with aliens, civilization, and a future dystopia, photorealistic 4K. And we'll keep the ones we have. I'll also add in a couple ones, like some of these futuristic ones, like cyber robot, biomechanical, cyberpunk cityscape. Oh my God, it's still on the in-painting one. Holy cow, what's happening here? Lots of green in this. I don't know how I'm feeling. It might be some of the styles clashing with each other, which could be a slight problem. If not, we'll turn some of them off and see what happens. Okay, something to kind of note here. So it looks like it's giving me the waterfall, but I don't see a civilization or any aliens. That's a sick picture. That's crazy. Dang, these are crazy. That's really sweet. So what we'll do is I'll save this picture and then I'll add this to the in paint here. We'll remove the cat. And what we'll do is I'll just say left and right in paint out paint and I'll keep the prompt the same and I'll click generate. All right, so we have two new images here and these look beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah, so it outpainted the image for us and gave us more context. And they both look great. You can see the differences in the way the landscape changes. Let's try a couple different prompts here to see what we can really make. I want to say a militia in the street and then get rid of these ones. And I want to put it on the Fortnite art style. I think this would be funny. I always forget to change it. This will be interesting. <laughs> Yo, no way. I wasn't even expecting for this to happen. That is so sweet. Oh my God, that's incredible. We'll get rid of the image 
image prompts here, and then I'll keep it on the Fortnite style, a film photography style of a golden field with a small barn at sunset. But yeah, these look really nice. These look like some real photorealistic pictures here. Let's try this one instead, but I'm gonna change it to, I'm gonna change it to a film photography style of a woman with hazel eyes, a light hair wearing a baseball cap close up. And here we go, some close up images. These look really good. You can even tell like it gives a little bit of imperfections to the skin here. The eyes are a little bit weird, but I overall it's a really good up close photo of a person. These look really realistic. That is insane. This photo is really good. It's like, it's one of those things that almost looks too perfect. I think you could use some imperfections in the skin, which would almost help it become more believable. I'm having a great time with this. If you guys are liking this video and have gotten any value about it so far, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, do all the things down below. It really, really does help out the channel. Where's the sleeping dragon? It just skipped over that part. It got the layer correctly and the layer looks sweet, but where's the dragon? Let's just do a statue of Liberty and then turn it into pixel art. God, I got rid of all the prompts and it still even looks pretty good, but face doesn't look that great and it's not really pixel art. I don't really know how I feel about that one. And then there's this one here of a real like photorealistic type image. Although this one I don't think looks really that good at all. Face isn't that good. It's just an overall like eh, kind of photo. It didn't really follow the pixel art. Let's just keep trying things here though. A man in a garage smoking a cigarette with all of this on it. Let's just take off the focus stuff and see what it gives us. Oh, it also has pixel art on it. This will be interesting. Let's, let's just see what he gives us. I'm interested now. Oh man, what did we generate? Yeah, this is interesting. You could definitely tell where the cyberpunk influences are in the colors. These are interesting. Okay, so he's got kind of like a lighter here. The cigarette isn't that good. The glasses are also just pretty whack in my opinion, but hey, it's not too bad. I, I think this is pretty sweet. Say so a Lamborghini in the street, dark, late at night, in the rain, cinematic action shot, driving cool colors, photorealistic. And then, well, I'll just keep it at that with some of the standard focus prompts. This is a really nice picture. I really do like it. It even gets the reflection of the of the headlights here, the lighting correct. I like how the colors reflect in the background here on the image. This is really nice. This is an interesting choice by the AI art generator, but put it in the back. A little view from the back. The license plate is unreadable, but that's kind of expected at this point right now. I like how there's a little bit of reflection from the headlights here, although I don't know if that quite matches up. It kind of got the same similar style background as the last image, which is pretty interesting. But I like the colors on this one a lot. I think it's a really, really cool image for what it is. I think I'll stop here on Focus. Make sure to give this a try for yourself. It's a lot of fun. I've been having a great time with it. This is honestly one of the best image generators that I've come across, especially locally, just for how simple it is to use and how good the images are. So I highly, highly recommend. Big props and thanks to the guys who put this together. If you got any value out of this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all those things down in the description below. But if you want to generate logos with AI, I'd actually recommend for you to go check out this video here where I talk about how you can make custom logos with Adal E3 with the text correct as well. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to go check it out and I'll see you guys over there.